Hello everyone and thanks for joining us today. Um, Phil Longett Higgins has asked me to give a special thank you to people that have joined from the Cyber Kingdom CISO community. So welcome to the call. It's great to have you on. Um, today we will be covering how to kickstart your SOC as a service efforts using Azure Sentinel. But first let's just do some introductions. So my name's Amy Stokes Waters. Oh, sorry, wrong slide. It's <laughs> uh, a good start, wasn't it? Um, mm -hmm. My name's Amy Stokes Waters. I am a identity and security specialist. I don't know why this slide keeps doing that. My apologies. Um, I'm an identity and security specialist at Identity Experts. I honestly don't know why that slide keeps doing that. We'll leave it there. Um, I'm an identity and security expert at um, Identity Experts. Um, I do have a very noisy two year old. So if you do hear her in the background, I apologise. And I'm sure you'll hear my dad running rapidly after her, um, trying to trying to catch her, capture her back again. Um, today I am joined on the call by Adrian Taylor from ITC Secure. Would you like to introduce yourself? Adrian? Yeah, hi. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, I'm Aid Taylor. I'm the uh, CTO of IT Secure. So um, we are a pure play um, cyber services company and I look after technology strategy, services development, uh, pre-sales, all, all things technical. Um, I do have, I don't have a two year old, but I have two giant dogs who occasionally butt into a conversation. So uh, <laughs> uh, apologies if that happens. I, I think probably, Amy, that first slide doesn't want to display because it's got my picture on it. Because <laughs> uh, it worked when it didn't. So uh, I think, yeah, I think yeah, I've, I've been playing around with that timings thing on PowerPoint, and um, clearly <laughs> got my timings all wrong. Um, but yeah, okay. So let's get started. Um, so let's just talk a, a bit of background onto what um, into what a Seam solution is and why we'd need one. Um, so hopefully everyone knows what Seam stands for. Um, until uh, about 12 months ago, I didn't. So I will uh, kindly uh, let you in on the acronym. So SEAM stands for Security, Incident and Events Management. Um, so why would we need a SEAM solution? Well, our digital estate is expanding um, pretty rapidly, uh, which makes it increasingly difficult to protect. Uh, currently with the coronavirus uh, pandemic going on, we've got a lot of home workers. Uh, so we've meaning we've got um, a lot of employees potentially accessing our environment from their own devices, which can cause a big challenge. Uh, we still have on-premise solutions we need to access, um, so we obviously need to be monitoring those while we're not in the office. Um, we also have things like partners we're working with, MSPs, other businesses we might liaise with on a regular basis. They may have access to our environment as well. Um, and then outside of the mobile device, um, arena there's a whole host of other devices that we were responsible for as well so printers VoIP telephony solutions um, IOT devices we might have enabled and all of these different areas can pose a threat to the security of our environment um, and as we progress our digital transformation projects and we kind of move increasingly to the cloud our perimeter expands beyond the boundary of that physical network so we're no longer um, you know in the far walls of our office and I think we're all feeling that more now than uh, we ever have done before we're all we're all, we're all in our home offices uh, or your dining room table as I am um, with coronavirus forcing us all to work and work or study remotely our data our users and our systems um, can no longer sit within the far walls of the office they're not protected by the enterprise network so we've got to make things accessible from any location but doing this we then know that opens us up to potential cyber attacks and um, the frequency and the sophistication of which is growing um, exponentially. There's been a sharp rise in um, in DDoS attacks on ADFS, in, in ADFS infrastructure we know about and um, there's lots more phishing campaigns going on. Um, Aid, I'm sure you've seen quite a few of these um, new attacks coming out through um, through the SOC that, you're, that you guys are running. Absolutely, yeah. It's um, Whenever there's a major event, somebody tries to take advantage and uh, uh, I think there's two things they're trying to take advantage of at the moment. One is people are working in less secure environments and two is the straightforward uh, people are gobbling up news about COVID-19 and anything that looks even remotely official they're more likely to click on. So I'm sure you've all seen it, but it's uh, it's been a massive spike and people trying to um, capitalise on it, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think it's, um, I mean, I think all of these things that I've mentioned there are a challenge that a lot of us are struggling with in IT security. I mean, when people, usually people that are working in IT security now, they're not, um, they didn't necessarily train in the same technologies that they're, they're currently working with. So if they were doing, if you're doing an information technology degree, I know 15 years ago, you probably weren't working that heavily with things like IoT. 
um i'm too young to know when it actually came out obviously so um i'm not sure <laughs> and i've not and i've not got an it degree either but um i'm sure that the, there's quite a big discrepancy between what people were trained in and what the it looked like 15 years ago than, than what it looks like now so i think it is a struggle that we um we're all facing uh, so how can we kind of help with that so i mean as an it as a, as a as a security operations team your mission is really to protect your information and your assets and like i said we know that mission is becoming increasingly difficult um, we've got attack techniques frequency complexity um, all evolving really quickly with more attack vectors that we've got so all those different things that we talked about before you know the iot devices mobiles laptops whatever um, with all those different attack vectors that brings more defensive technologies so we pretend, so we potentially have um, multiple vendors and then multiple products to configure we've got to maintain those products upgrade them and obviously the best bit for everyone is the multiple sales people um, we know how much it people love dealing with those um, another challenge that we face as well is that there's a shortage of cyber security personnel um, we know that teams are often understaffed they've got a, quite a big workload they're protecting a lot of information so it's identities data devices applications it's a hybrid estate we're not just looking in one area um, and then adding to that obviously with the multiple um, multiple security technologies that we might be using there's a, a lot of portals that we might need to look at so you might have one for your mdm one for your email threats your firewalls um, and that itself can be a headache um, and again because we've got multiple products and they're not necessarily correlating um, data or they're not integrated together we can see quite a high false positive rate um, in those individual uh, solutions because they're working in isolation so um, I mean using an integrated product set I don't know who, how many people are on um, M365 at the moment but um, using an integrated product set like that can help to reduce the noise kind of enable prioritization of incidents and alerts and really facilitate that investigation um, using some automated um, technologies but also you know with manual intervention because you're able to see the high priority stuff that you really need to to get on board with so this is where we think Azure Sentinel can help um, so Microsoft made it really easy to collate data from across that hybrid estate so we know that we don't have everything in the cloud um, I think I know a lot more has been going into the cloud recently, but um, we know that he's put, it's unlikely you're going to have 100% of your workloads up there. Um, so you do need to bring data in um, from on-premise services as well. And you want to ingest alerts from devices, users, applications, servers, and any cloud service. I mean, we know I am from, I'm sure you can tell a Microsoft fangirl. I talk about Microsoft all the time, um, but I do know that all other organizations don't have just a Microsoft estate and they will want to ingest data from other places like AWS. Um, so it, the Sentinel can ingest data from obviously non Microsoft sources. It is a cloud native theme, so there's no upfront costs for, for setting it up for infrastructure in terms of infrastructure. There's no issues around the infrastructure maintenance either, so power and cooling, scaling it or um, yeah, scaling it up, you don't have to go out and buy a load, new, a load of new servers. Obviously, it just sits in Azure, it's native to that, so it's easy to kind of use that burst storage capacity to, um, to scale up and down as your requirements change. Um, and the ability to scale on demand means that you can start out quite small and then you can add additional integrations as you're ready to do so. Um, age, what kind of, um, do, you, do you find that customers tend to start out with using maybe just the M365 technologies to start with and then start adding additional workloads in? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, uh, so it, it's really easy to turn on um, a relatively small part of the estate to demonstrate value um, and to make sure you're actually getting something that you can work with and something meaningful for you uh, and then to go and um, enable other other feeds uh, from mm -hmm. other sources. Uh, and yeah, we 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 see that um, we see that all the time and in fact we encourage it because it means that none of us have a you know neither us or the customer have a massive upfront project uh, to, to to get it into a state where we can demonstrate value we can do it all very quickly mostly remotely uh, in fact entirely remotely um, uh, and and demonstrate what kind of thing is going to what it's going to look like before we then make the commitment or the customer makes the commitment to go and put everything else through it yeah definitely um and I think with the with the Office 365 data being able to be brought in for free, I mean that does that does exclude Azure AD audit logs, but everything else from Office 365 you can bring into Sentinel for free. So you're not using 
um, a load of money to kind of test it out and, and play around with it. Um, you can get you can get started with a solution for free, and you can start seeing some um, really interesting data from the existing security tools that you that you've got enabled. Um, so I just want to show you a few um, screenshots of the of the solution um, before I hand over to Aid to kind of chat about how we um, how how ITC Secure are bringing a real value add um, service wrap around this solution as well. Um, so there's built-in dashboard. So here's a dashboard from um, from a connector. So once you've started to ingest some data, um, the dashboards really do start to become meaningful. Um, from the main Sentinel dashboard, you get a bird's eye perspective of the events that are going on in the environment. Um, so in this one, we have got a few events that have started to trickle in. This screenshot is from a demo that we did a couple of weeks ago um, where one of our one of my colleagues actually set up um, a Sentinel instance live on the demo. Um, I think it took around seven minutes end to end to get it started. So she had to set up the, the Sentinel um, environment and then start ingesting some of the data from M365 and Azure. Um, so that's why this dashboard's not um, particularly uh, populated, but it, that was um, it was done within seven minutes, so it was pretty uh, pretty quick to get started with it. Um, the dashboards combine multiple kinds of visual visualizations, so in including graphs and maps. And we've got a map uh, a map of the attack in two slides time. Um, so you you can see kind of um, trends across events and cases. You can see anomalies that are detected by the built-in AI capabilities within um, Sentinel as well. Um, and there's over 100 built-in rules. Um, so these have been developed by Microsoft and community security experts. Um, you can edit them yourselves or there's a wizard that helps you create your own analytics rules using KQL queries. Um, I'm sure quite a lot of you out there um, won't know how to write KQL because I think it's quite a, um, it, it's an interesting language is how I've heard some developers um, refer to it. Um, but yes, yeah, so the, the, the queries are written in KQLs and then these rules can create alerts and then incidents can be used to um, to trigger automated playbooks which kind of orchestrate that response to the alerts. They'll do some of the automated incident response as well. And like I said, we've got an investigation map so we can visualise um, an incident. So we can investigate alerts and incidents by deep diving into the logs. Um, we can run built-in hunting queries developed by Microsoft, or we can use this investigation map to understand the scope and identify the root cause of a security threat. Um, so the more things that are on this map, um, I guess the worse it is because it's affected more things, but if you, you can click into the, each of the individual nodes and you can kind of see uh, detailed information and get some deep insights into the related entities, uh, so that the users and the domains, etc., that have been affected. So. Um, just let's have a quick chat around the benefits of using um, Azure Sentinel and then I'll hand over to Aid. Um, so with the lockdown having a major effect on the UK economy, having a cost effective solution um, is key right now. Um, like we said, Azure Sentinel is cloud native, so there's no infrastructure cost, there's no upfront fees um, for you know servers and uh, software. So on top of this, you can bring your Office 365 data for free. So the more security products you're using from the Microsoft stack, the more free data you can ingest into the solution. So the benefits of using integrated technologies like Azure AD, Microsoft Information Protection, um, the ATP suite, that's all, um, it's all compounded when we can start looking at this data in our theme solution. Uh, you can also bring your Azure Activity Logs and Office 365 Logs as well. So you can get a, a pretty holistic view of your environment um, for a fairly low cost. We do often get asked as well about how organisations can predict the monthly billing so they can budget accordingly. Um, so using Azure reserved instances, it's exactly the same as it's just for um, as if you've just got VMs in the cloud. You can you can have a reserved instance for um, Sentinel as well, um, which lets you take out a set amount of storage each month on a fixed fixed contract term. Uh, and in return for that, you can get up to, I think it's 60% ish savings. Um, but on the flip side, if you don't want to commit to that annual investment, then you can use the pay as you go model. Um, so you, that gives you the flexibility to scale up and down throughout the year and bring in additional um, workloads or remove them as, as you guys see fit. Secondly, um, Sentinel easily connects to sources across our hybrid IT environment. So we don't want to spend loads of uh, excessive time, money, effort integrating um, systems 
integrating technologies into our SIEM solution. Um, and like we said, with a lot of people already using M365, we can use the pre-built connectors to bring those Microsoft solutions in. Um, but again, I know that not everyone does run exclusively on Microsoft technologies. So Microsoft does have a, an extensive partner ecosystem. So they've had the foresight to create native connectors and dashboards for popular solutions like um, uh, Palo Alto, Symantec, Fortinet, uh, Cisco, um, there's a there's a big li long list of um, additional solutions you can bring in uh, quickly and easily as well. And again, the Graph API integration with sorry with the Graph API integration, you can import your own um, threat intelligence data as well. Um, so you've got the flexibility to kind of customize Sentinel to to suit your organization's requirements. I think this is probably quite a big one and it's probably one that you um, see a lot as well, Aid of the SOC, the fact that Sentinel can help re reduce that alert fatigue. So by bringing, um, by looking at, it looks at all these events obviously, but we can, using the machine learning engine, we can really hone where the real incidents are. Mm. Is that, is that um, you find that useful in? Yeah, the absolutely. It, um, uh, it, it all, so, so a lot of, Correlation engines will will do this to a degree, right? And that's why SIEM exists. But but actually, we found Sentinel to be um, uh, very efficient at it. So the actual amount of work that ends up in front of the analysts is uh, smaller, which means you get the actual problems addressed much more quickly. It works yeah. well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I mean, if we look at the uh, left hand side. Oh. If we look at like the left hand side, we've got the ingestion of the raw data from the cloud services. So that's from Office 365 and Azure. And um, that produces the anomalous signals. So using security products like ATP. Um, and then from there, we can pull out what we what, what are potentially suspicious candidates. So it might be things like uh, anomalous credential reuse or a, a new ad, a new admin's been added into SharePoint. Um, then we reduce this down further by adding additional rounds of machine learning analysis. Um, which then helps us to to see what cases um, we actually need to investigate. So that's where the SecOps team can then really focus, um, and we can integrate the uh, this, the tool with um, tools like ServiceNow, so you can then um, prioritise and assign your security incidents to people within your organisation. Um, or obviously, uh, if you've outsourced that SOC, then um, the the SOC can do that. Um, but we can, yeah, like I said, prioritise and assign those incidents, and that really helps to improve the efficiency and the efficacy of that incident response as well. Because we want to um, ensure that when we, when we get breached, not if we get breached. That's the saying in it. We don't. Um, <laughs> we're not going to pretend that we're 100% effective with anything. Uh, when we get breached, we know that we can remediate that as quickly as possible. Uh, and then finally, using the, the Microsoft Graph and AI based investigation, we know that Sentinel reduces the time it takes to understand the full scope of an attack and its impact. Um, so with the, the visual map, we can see um, we can see the full extent of that of that attack and we can take quick actions to remediate or mitigate any of those actions. Um, there's pre-built Azure notebooks and the custom hunting queries so you can automate those threat hunting capabilities um, and they also give you the ability um, to proactively protect your um, your staff. Um, and as more data is fed into the solution, Microsoft developing more notebooks and queries, uh, meaning that you're on a path of continuous improvement as soon as you start using your Sentinel environment. It's, it is Microsoft pumping a billion dollars um, every year into research and development around the security tooling. So it's definitely um, a, an upward path from here. Um, and now I'm going to hand over to Aid so he can um, tell you more around ITC Secure and what, uh, what these guys do. Thank you very much. Do um, are you moving the slides for me, Amy? Just, I uh, am. I will. Go wonderful. Ahead. Thank you very much. So, um, the first question that w this is really interesting because as a managed services provider, so people that we provide SOC services, uh, MDR services, and managed Sentinel, uh, managed SIEM. Um, one of the questions that we had to ask ourselves when we started working with Sentinel with the Microsoft security stack is uh, this is a much friendlier set of tools um, than anything really we've seen in the market before and it's been developed at massive cost by Microsoft to uh, to appeal to the end user to give really useful information to the people who are consuming their services so um, if the complexity and the barriers to enabling um, 
uh, these services are reduced, then you know what is the role not just of us, but what is the role of managed security service providers with in 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 this new world? And it's really cathartic for us. Actually, it's really useful to look at that because for two reasons. One, it makes us clearly go back, look at our message, redefine what it is we do that we believe is value add to the customers, regardless of whether the customer has, you know, internal security or you know. Um, the, the ability to consume the information that, that Sentinel and uh, other security tools are giving them. Um, but also, I think importantly, from our point of view and from the customer's point of view, for the first time, we're able to totally separate the costs of what we do from that of the infrastructure. So the way we uh, and, and companies do it differently, but the way ITC delivers Sentinel uh, MDR or managed SOC services um, it is the Microsoft bill remains the customers. You know, the, the customer is going to have a relationship with Microsoft, a preferred supplier, uh, Microsoft uh, supplier. They will already have, uh, in most cases, a, a, um, an M365 bill, an Office 365 bill. Um, th and this, we don't get involved in that. We say we advise on. Uh, the configuration will help configure, turn on Sentinel, ingest all the sources, we'll do all that uh, for and with the customer. But we won't sell uh, any Microsoft licenses, we don't sell the additional storage used in the analytics layer, um, we, we don't get involved in that. So uh, unlike selling uh, an, a managed service based on any of the previous seams that we deal with, and we still deal with with, with other seams, we're a, a big ArcSight partner and you know, we will remain so uh, it's you know horses for courses. We don't sell those licenses, so we have nothing to do with the supporting infrastructure. And so that means when the customer, when we quote a customer, what we're quoting for is just the things that we do, the things that our uh, our, our skill offering, if you like, our, our value add. Um, so I think it's much easier for the customer to see what they're getting uh, and to see if they are getting it from us. And it's much easier for us to 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 say look, we place this value on what it is that we're uh, we're doing for you, and uh, uh, and it's clear, it's very clear cut. So, um, so yes, uh, does Sentinel uh, SOC even need a managed service? Well, uh, we believe uh, it does. We believe we still have uh, a lot of value to bring. There's a very basic point there. You know, twenty four seven is. Uh, still a challenge for a lot of organisations if you are going to be um, running a, a project to acquire, to ingest, to process uh, and, and to present security data from uh, via Sentinel or from any tool, there's very little point in not watching it 24-7, right? Not having somebody, you know, physically sitting in front of a screen processing alerts and deciding whether to take action or to do further analysis on a 24 hour basis. And that, you know, it's a very basic thing, but it's still uh, uh, an issue which um, it affects a lot of our customers. It's, it's still a reason that drives a lot of customers to come and talk to a managed services provider because obviously we've invested in uh, in teams who work uh, around the clock who have these skills and uh, are still more cost effective than uh, than than hiring them yourself and setting up a, a team. So it's basic, but it still remains true. Um, further to that, um, there are some great automatic responses built into Sentinel. There's some great, we saw the graph that showed the reduction of you know, billions of um, bits of data down to, uh, you know, just a, a dozen or so actionable pieces of intelligence. Um, uh, and that works really well. Uh, and also in the Microsoft it, wider Microsoft environment, you can take automatic action through things like uh, Defender ATP um, to to detect and mitigate uh, threats. It, it, you know, in in seconds, a lot more quickly than an analyst could process it and decide to take action. But ultimately, it's still not going to um, give you a completely secure environment. Ultimately, you still need um, uh, people involved in the mix to 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 check that automation is doing what it's supposed to be doing, to tune that automation, to automate more things as appropriate. We automate as much as we possibly can, um, uh, you know, dependent on risk profile. But there are some things that you never want to automate, and you always want somebody. It is of a it's either of, uh, attacked uh, attached to very significant data or assets, um, uh, and you always want to know about that. 
uh, or it's of significant severity and you always want to know about that. You don't want just a, an automated reaction to happen. Um, and so we provide that content creation and data uh, curation. So um, you can, uh, from, from a content curation point of view, what I'm talking about is uh, playbooks, uh, use cases, uh, that uh, the setting up of that of those automated responses, um, how you handle the data, what you do with it when you get it, the the generation of um, uh, what another interesting. Um, angle here is this is the generation of intellectual property, the tuning of the tools to reflect your environment more precisely than it does out of the box to reduce those false positives even further to make it a, a, a usable environment for uh, the most usable it can be for your specific business. Um, but that intellectual property, once you've done that, remains the customers in this environment. Now, previously, that wouldn't be the case, you know, for most MSSPs, including ourselves, if we were um, providing licensing a SIEM environment and a platform, developing the content for it. Um, typically, you know, if you decide you don't want to do, you don't want to operate that SOC with us anymore, all that work that's been done, all that fine tuning, all, all, all that um, automatic, uh, all that KQL scripting, all the automation that's been done, uh, goes with the, the contract, disappears when when you leave in this environment because the infrastructure is yours anything we do stays with you and so you can simply pick that up and take it to another services provider it's a real clean separation um, uh, of, of roles and responsibilities um, and data curation uh, I prefer to call it curation because it really is curation these days you know you get the tools are very good at sorting out when you have ingested multiple things, multiple times the same event from different sources, they're pretty good at it. Um, but still, it, it, the the old adage that if you put garbage in, you get garbage out applies. So you know, one of the things we do at implementation and then constantly throughout the life of a service contract with a customer is we make sure that what we're taking in. Uh, is the data which is needed to offer the best visibility and the best level of protection for the customer. We don't just ingest everything, tempting that may be to do that. You know, there's a balance between costs, risks and actionable security and, and we establish that for the customer. Uh, and then of course threat hunting. So the platform uh, allows us to go and look uh, for, for risks in the environment, um, particularly if it's coupled with uh, uh, other uh, Microsoft tools, other third party tools, uh, in this case something maybe like Defender ATP, um, we can use uh, the, the, the indicators of compromise that we see from, from SIEM to go and to inform our, our, our analysts to go and look for evidence of breach or attack elsewhere in the environment at 24 7. You know, we have the people, that's what they do. Uh, real time protection goes. Uh, without saying we're there to uh, detect and respond. Um, I've talked about the proof of value um, uh, and I think if you have to prove to a, uh, a board that the investment you're asking them to make in, uh, uh, in an internal SOC or internal security tools, actually proving that you are preventing something happening is very hard to do. Whereas um, if you have an external services provider with a clearly defined um, set of roles and responsibilities can demonstrate to you what they're doing on an hourly daily basis through you know very detailed reporting and interactions and uh, uh, portals etc. Um, it's much easier to say look we need to make this investment or it's easier to, to, to justify um, making that investment. It helps separate the, the, the proof of value from the cost of the infrastructure. Um, and it's controlled investment. Y you know, we um, we agree a price for a for a period of time um, and you're not left with, uh, you know, potentially spiraling runaway costs that you might be if you were um, attempting to do this internally. Uh, thanks, Amy. I've, that's, that's the next nice. one. Yeah, I was just going to say it's like you get you get your reserved instance of Azure Sentinel and you've got your reserved costs from from you guys as well. So it is quite um, it's easy to kind of make that budget for it. And like you said, again, with the 24-7 the challenge, I was speaking to a customer earlier. Um, 
and then we were talking around like when they're not in the office no one's watching that solution and if you think about when you're not in the office it's like 80 percent of the time because <laughs> you're yeah. there for eight you're only there for eight hours a day right yeah, um yeah. so over the weekend or whatever there's no one there's no one actually sat there doing anything so i think that's where where a big value add from you guys as well i remember those days being in the office um, <laughs> i would love to go back to the office it'd be great <laughs> So finally, and I'll rattle through this song because I'm aware I took quite a long time over that one. Uh, apologies, Amy. So, um, so I've, I've talked about, you know, we have a, a London based stock where it normally is uh, at the moment. It's based in dozens of different places, uh, uh, as you can imagine, uh, as we've all moved remote. We have the people, we've invested in the people. They are, you know, highly accredited, highly qualified guys and girls. Um, we have done the integration. Amy talked about integration. We have uh, performed integration with lots and lots of different systems, uh, you know, threat feeds, CRMs, um, lots, lots and lots of different tools. Our, our guys, we, we have developers on team uh, who help us to do these things. And the chances are, if you want to integrate something, we've probably already done it and can turn it on uh, easily for you and manage that for you. Um, uh, and, you know, as with all managed service providers, the point of using somebody like that, I guess, is uh, using somebody like us is we've made the investment so that you don't have to make that similar investment. You know, we uh, our business exists because we've made the investment in the tools and the people uh, and, and the training and we can sell parts of that uh, to, to lots of different people. Uh, we uh, obviously establish and, uh, and maintain uh, vendor relationships, industry peer relationships, community forums, uh, all all the industries that we've, um, all the, the the sectors and verticals that we deal with, um, and the events we run. You know that's uh, that's all good knowledge, which uh, uh, eventually filters down to informs our, our services, the way we take products to market, and also gives us lots of um, uh, uh, insight into how lots of companies in lots of different positions. Uh, of all sizes are dealing with the uh, uh, the problem of reduction of cyber risk uh, and, and all that helps us to give each of our customers uh, I think a, a more rounded view uh, and a better service than they would get if they were attempting to do it alone and reports you know uh, the the kind of uh, the big chunky output that everyone wants to see from uh, from from seam you know that's fine uh, it, there's a lot of it, there's a lot available, um, but I think one of the thing, one of our challenges is to make those reports uh, uh, meaningful and to make sure that you have um, established trends over time so we can see that the things that we're doing, the things that you're doing are uh, increasing your security, reducing your risk day on day, month on month, year on year, and we are good at developing reports uh, in order to help show that. Um, so that hopefully I've uh, gone some way to justify our existence in this uh, in this in this world where you can uh, uh, set up a, a seam in seven minutes live on a call. Uh, <laughs> but um, that's uh, that's me, Amy. So thank you very much for your time. No, that's fine. I thought that was really really great. Yeah, I mean the fact that you can set up the seam in seven minutes um, and bring in bring in some of that data doesn't. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that you know what you're doing once you see that data. So <laughs> it just makes me got to work harder for our money. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's um, yeah. I've, well, and then I think it just shows how how um good the Sentinel tool is as well. The fact that it is it is easily configurable, but the just because the tool is easily configurable, it doesn't mean that the data that we're dealing with and the threats that we're dealing with are any um are any simpler to to kind of um prevent as well so obviously that's where all of your great um analysts come in to do some of that proactive um remediation activities and, and kind of proactive threat hunting um capabilities as well so uh, i think that's pretty much it from the talking perspective so we just want to give you a bit of a um, an idea of kind of the next steps that you could take if you wanted to uh, move forward with us um so ITC Secure are uh, providing 30 day free trials um, for some clients to assess their stock as a service needs. Um, so if you're interested about one of those, feel free to get in touch. Um, 
identity experts are offering sentinel proof of concept engagements. Um, some of those could be fully funded um, or some could be paid. Um, we'll have to we'll talk about it on a case by case basis. Um, but that's where we'll sort of install the solution for you. We'll do a bit of um, remote monitoring, give you some recommendations on um, on the on the setup and it can, you can kind of get an idea of what the spend might look like as well um, and if you're just interested in learning a bit more about sentinel you might want a bit of a deep dive have a chat with one of our techies then feel free to get in touch um, and we can provide a bit more information about what sentinel can do for you um, i'm not sure whether there's been any questions in the q a box i can't see it because i'm presenting so um can you see it Ed? No. No. Can't. No. Okay. Let me just check. No. Okay. Doesn't look like we've had um any questions. But if anyone does um want to send some through, then you know feel free. My email address was on the last slide. It's Amy S at identityexperts.co.uk. Um. Otherwise, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time, everyone.